हेलो एवरीवन यस इन टुडेज लेक्चर विल स्टार्ट विथ वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी बिफोर दैट डियर फ्रेंड्स डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू रजिस्टर योर सेल्फ फॉर द अन अकेडमी से टू पॉइंट ओ स्टार्टेड टूडे इट सेल्फ सो इट्स अ टू डेज समिट विच विल हेल्प यू throughout your preparation yes so i hope many of you have attended this summit today itself so we have this summit for two days that is today and tomorrow so register yourself with using code rbi live yes friends now we'll start with the shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary so friends tell me what is mean by wildlife sanctuary yes anyone what is mean by wildlife sanctuary as a general information yes yes guys so wildlife sanctuary is an area where animal habitat and it and their surroundings are protected from any sort of disturbances all right yes so we'll see the wildlife sanctuary and why the sanctuary is in news recently okay so before that it's my pleasure to welcome you all on an academy india's largest e-learning platform where you will get daily live classes structured courses unlimited access for live and recorded classes along with unlimited mock tests so during the preparation evaluation is the most important part throughout the preparation so we'll provide you unlimited mock tests yes we 100 plus top educators will guide you throughout the preparation so download an academy learning app today and start your preparation it's me rishikesh inamda having experience more than 8 years in the field of upsc guidance right you can follow me on an academy and you can join our telegram group using this link yes those aspirants is in dilemma so where they start the preparation or from which subject they can start the preparation so we have 15000 plus courses available on our platform including polity governance and international relations history current affairs geography indian economy science technology environment and ecology and many more so start your preparation with an academy and let's crack it yes this is the information regarding subscription now you will ask how we can join yes so just download the app and we'll provide you the two subscription options now that is plus and iconic subscription where you will get discount on the fees if you will use the referral code rbi live so in this february month you will get 10% discount on your subscription using a referral code rbi live and those aspirants are in first year second year third year or fourth year of their graduation they can opt for iconic subscription in which they'll get personal coach along with study planner as well so hurry up and subscribe today yes these are the recently batches we have started for the 6 month 1 year 2 years and ncert batches right this is the combo subscription options available for you with one year two years and three years subscription where you will get again 10% discount using code rbi life yes so friends we'll start today's topic shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary so 
as we have discussed a general information that is what is mean by wildlife sanctuary so those aspirants joined just now so i'm just repeating as we are saying wildlife sanctuary is an area where animal habitat and their surroundings are protected from any sort of disturbances okay so in which now today will study about shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary so this sanctuary was in news recently okay so we'll see all those details right now yes before that we'll see where is it located so shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary is protected area in gujarat state so it's located in the western satpura range south of the narmada river yes so it's located in the western satpura range south of the narmada river right yes now so the sanctuary was first created in 1982 over an area of 150.87 square kilometer approx as dunkal sanctuary yes so this dunkal sanctuary an important home for sloth bears so in 1982 dunkal sanctuary was created an area of 150.87 square kilometer so what happened after that in 1987 and 1989 the area of sanctuary was enlarged to 607.70 square kilometer approx and then it renamed as it was renamed as shulpaneshwar sanctuary right now so this forest area located in gujarat that is in satpura range so this is one of the best and thickest forest in gujarat and spread over an area which includes major watershed feeding uh, feeding yes major watershed feeding to major reservoirs with rajpipla hills at backdrop yes so remember rajpipla hills is located near shul maneshwar sanctuary so in this forest area thick vegetative ground cover not only provides endless greenery and habitat and home to variety of life forms but also conserves the soil and water yes so this area conserves soil and water along with vegetative ground that is endless greenery yes now so now we'll see the word shulpaneshwar yes friends so so this word shulpaneshwar derives from historic temple of lord shiva so which once existed in the region on the bank of river narmada but what happened this temple is now submerged due to sardar sarovar reservoir and a new shulpaneshwar temple has since been built near rajpipla yes so the word shulpaneshwar refers to lord shiva right Prepared as having shul or trishul in his hand, and that is pani. So shul paneshwar temple. So the word or name of shul paneshwar derived from the historic temple of Lord Shiva. Yes. So this is a pic picture of old temple submerged into the Sardar Sarovar reservoir. Yes, reservoir. Now. this area basically we can say this area is predominantly by the tribals 
right so there is one tribe that is the vasavas yes so this vasavas is the main tribal community in this area of shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary so this local population heavily depends on the forest produce for socio economic sustenance right so as we know a number of tribes in our country they depended on forest produce itself for their day to day needs yes so for example in the forest they just constructed or we can say they arrange their house with the help of bamboos or trees itself yes so we can say they depend on bamboos specific in this area and so bamboo is indeed as poor man's timber yes so in this picture you can say you can see the use of bamboos and they using this this products or they selling this products in the market as well so their day to day needs and they are dependent on the forest product itself yes now in this sanctuary if we are talking about in this area about the flora and fauna along with animal habitat so large flying squirrel are you know habitat they they have their habitat in this region so large flying squirrel is a nocturnal forest animal now these are the few details about this flying squirrel so we can say a rare rare type of squirrel occurred in this area yes so basically it roots in tree holes or prepares large leaf nests and squirrels caught during night which betrays their presence although known as flying squirrel yes it cannot fly and can only glide through the air yes see these pictures so it cannot fly it can only glide through the air covering wide gaps yes so it's all about flying a squirrel so occurred in this area yes now the sanctuary has vast undulating terrain ever providing greenery tall inspiring canopy deep awesome valleys like silent rocks youthful stream majestic waterfalls and breathtaking landscapes as well yes so all this we can say gift of nature is at the congregation of vindhan and satpura hill ranges yes now we'll see as i told you this wildlife sanctuary is located in gujarat so see it's the map of gujarat state so and see the location of shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary so this is the protected area in gujarat and located in satpura range south of the narmada river so basically it shares a common boundary with madhya pradesh and maharashtra yes now going to the next information regarding this wildlife sanctuary see this is the map yes yes friends now we'll move further so this wildlife sanctuary and this forest area rated as one of the best and thickest in the gujarat which spread over which includes major watershed feeding and two reserves that is rajpipla hills 
as I told you er earlier. So now fauna such as sloth bear, leopard. So now we'll see animal habitat and fauna like sloth bear, leopard, rhesus monkey, common man, mangoes, mongoose, Indian sea wet cat, Indian porcupine, four horned antelope, barking deer, deer cheetah that is pangolin, flying squirrel, python, snakes, lizards, tortoises, etc. So these are animal and their habitat found here. Yes. So the sanctuary has the rare distinction of having flying squirrels as we have seen pictures and few details of flying squirrel. Yes. So this area is predominantly tribal with Waswas, the main tribal, and they are depending on the forests. Yes. So these are the few pictures from the Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Yes. See the beauty of nature, friends. Yes, we are so lucky. So we are residing in a such a country where a diversity with nature and such a, we can say, a vast area in the country and we have number of centuries throughout the country. Yes, definitely in the f next few sessions we'll cover the part related with the wildlife sanctuary and forests as well. Yes. Yes, flora and fauna and these are the few pictures from Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Yes, now after that, register yourself with an Academy Summit 2.0 where we have iconic speakers and exper expertise from the fields like these are the speakers will guide you in this Unacademy Semi 2.0. Yes, so these speakers are Ravi Shankar Prasad, Minister for Communications and Electronics and IT, Law and Justice, right? Then we have Kailash Satyarthi, Nobel Peace Laureate and Child Rights Activist, Deepak Gupta, author and former chairman of Union Public Service Commission, then we have Jayesh Rajan, Secretary, Electronics and Communication and Information Technology, Telangana Government. And then we have Durga Shakti Nagpal, IS Officer. Yes, she'll interact with you during the summit. Then we have Dr. Ajit Ranade, Chief Economist, Aditya Belagro. Yes. As we are watching the number of programs by one of the famous anchor on Rajya Sabha TV, Frank Rosen Pereira. Yes, he will also interact and he will guide you in this summit. And Parvin Kaswam, Indian Forest Officer, also guide you during the summit. Along with these speakers, our top educators also guide you to prepare your strategy for the civil services examination. Yes, friends. So, attend this summit. I hope many of you have attended today itself and we continue watching and participating in the summit tomorrow as well. Yes. Now, come to that point. Yes. Now, this Shilpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary was in news due to protest okay so what is that pro protest and you know the tribal communities have been protesting against one of the order executed by the ministry of environment forest and climate change right so the centers 
mentioned in that order or they classifying 121 villages around the Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary in Narmada district as an eco-sensitive zone. Yes, eco-sensitive zones. Yes. So, center declared 121 or they classifying 121 villages around the Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary as eco-sensitive zones. So that's why the local communities and tribal communities started protest against this order of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now, what about that order or provision? So, first, they mentioned the land falling in the eco-sensitive zone cannot be transferred for non-agricultural use, for commercial, industrial or residential purposes. So in this order, they mentioned or government mentioned that the land falling into the eco-sensitive zone cannot be transferred for non-agriculture use that is for commercial, industrial or residential purposes. And any land that needs to be transferred can be done only after the approval from the state government. Yes, in case if a particular owner of that land wants to transfer this area or particular land for any commercial, industrial or residential purposes, that land or that process of transferred the land should be approved by the state government. Yes. Now, second is, a process has been initiated to include the state government as the co-owner of the land in the 121 villages. So in this order, government mentioned that or they started a process initiated to include the state government as the co-owner. Yes. So along with the owner of these lands, state government is mentioned as a co-owner. Okay. So rights transferred of this land as a co-owner to the state government in this 121 villages. Now, third is, they feel that it could dilute. So, power vested with the villages under the Panchayati Extension of Scheduled Areas Act 1996 implemented in areas notified under Schedule 5 of the Constitution. So, these are the reasons these tribal communities protesting against order issued by the central government or Ministry of Environment and Forest. Yes. So, these tribal communities feel that this order dilute the power vested with the villages under PESA Act. So, we'll see what is this PESA Act and the current situation related with this Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Yes. So, basically, this PESA Act is mentioned in the Article 243M of our Indian Constitution. Yes. Under part of the Constitution, the mention, the Parliament may by law extended its provisions to the scheduled and tribal areas subject to such as exceptions and modifications as may be specified in a such a law and no, and no such a law shall be deemed to be an amendment to the constitution. So, under this article mention, uh, under this article, PESA is mentioned. Right. So, there was one committee submitted his reports that is Bhuria committee. Just remember guys name of the committee that is Bhuria committee 
submitted his report in 1995. So the parliament enacted Panchayat Extension Schedule Act 1996 PESA. Yes, to extend the part of the constitution with certain modifications and exceptions to the scheduled five of areas scheduled five areas yes so now we can say current situation or at presently scheduled five areas exist in 10 states that is andhra pradesh chhattisgarh gujarat himachal pradesh jharkhand Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, Rajasthan and Telangana. So these 10 states are the part of the schedule 5. Yes. So the Ministry of Panchayati Raj is the nodal ministry for the implementation of provisions of PESA in the states. Yes. So, here you should remember Ministry of Panchayati Raj is the nodal ministry for the implementation of the provisions of PESA in the states. Yes, now we'll see key features of model PESA rules. So, what is this PESA rule and why? these tribal communities uh, which means how this PESA empower tribal communities in this particular reserved areas as well right so now we'll see so under this PESA rules village has been defined as a habitation or a group of habitations or a hamlet or a group of hamlets comprising a community and managing its affairs in accordance with the with its traditions and customs yes so in this pesa they mentioned that so a village has been defined as a habitation Yes. So the Gram Panchayat shall be deemed to be the executive committee of the Gram Sabha and the secretary of the Gram Panchayat will be deemed to be the secretary of the Gram Sabha and the Gram Sabha will hold a meeting at, at least once in two months. So this PESA rules is talking about the nature of habitation or like existence of their habitations yes after that it's talking about the gram panchayat or gram sabhas right so the gram panchayat shall be deemed to be the executive committee of the gram sabha right and the secretary of gram panchayat will be deemed to be the secretary of the gram sabha secretary of the gram panchayat will be deemed to be the secretary of the Gram Sabha and they will conduct or they will hold meeting at least once in two months to discuss issues and you know overall needs and requirements of the villages and general interaction about to follow rules and regulations and their needs as well yes Now, under the PESA rule, they mentioned that a person who is a member of a scheduled tribe, yes, a person who is a member of scheduled tribe will be selected as a chairperson for the meeting of the Gram Sabha. Yes, secretary is the, you know, Gram Panchayat Secretary deemed to be the Secretary of Gram Sabha and if we are talking about chairperson so a person who is a member of scheduled tribe will be selected as a 
chairperson for the meeting of the Gram Sabha. Yes, with the, for one year by consensus, right? So this chairperson is selected for the one year term. Now, in case of non-consensus amongst the members present, the oldest lady from the scheduled tribes would be the chairperson. See, this space is talked about women empowerment as well, right? So, in case of non-consensus amongst the members present, then the oldest lady from the scheduled tribe, scheduled tribes, would be the chairperson for the meeting of the Gram Sabha. Yes, so friends, we are talking about PESA rules and we are studying PESA rules. Yes. So now the quorum of the meeting of the Gram Sabha will be one of fifth of the total members. There shall be a separate quorum for women, which will be one third of the general quorum. So these are the rules of the Gram Sabha mentioned under the PESA. Yes. Next. Now, the Gram Sabha may constitute standing committees. That is, now, as we know, uh, in number, uh, when we are talking about general administration in the under the Gram Panchayat, right, they are constituting few committees for the work allocation and Gram Panchayat allocate the work to these committees, right, for the development of village as well and day-to-day -day administration. So here as well, the Gram Sabha may constitute standing committees, that is, peace committee, yes, justice committee, resource planning and management committee, intoxication control committee, Debt Control Committee, Market Committee, Sabha Kosh Committee and others deemed appropriate by the Gram Sabha in order to fulfill its responsibilities regarding various aspects of the working of the village. Yes. So, the members of these committees shall be elected in an open meeting of the Gram Sabha among members of the Gram Sabha. Yes. So, the members of the Gram Sabha will elect members for these committees and they'll fulfill their responsibilities regarding various aspects of the working of the village. Right? Yes. So, in case of need, these members of the Gram Sabha are forming temporary or constituting temporary temporary or ad hoc committees as well. As per the requirement, they are constituting these ad hoc or temporary committees. Yes. In this act, they mentioned that the tenure of these all standing committees will be one or two years as decided by the Gram Sabha. So, the tenure of these standing committees decided by the Gram Sabha like for the one year or two years. Yes. Next. The Gram Sabha will ensure that resources are, are utilized in such a way that livelihood means are sustained. So, in these, these areas, if we are talking about in normal areas, we have ample of resources for the sustainability. But in these reserved areas, you know, it's challenged for the surviving. Now, these Gram Sabhas will ensure that resources are utilized in such a way that livelihood means are sustained. Inequality among the people does not increase. Resources are not confined to a few few people. Yes, so it's a we can say duty or Gram Sabha will ensure all these factors. Now, the Gram Sabha under this PESA Act 
Gram Sabha shall be mandatory involved in all decision relating to the land acquisition, peace and security, dispute resolutions that is through justice committee as well, management of natural resources, agriculture and land, mines and minerals, intoxication control, minor forest produced or produce, management of markets, money lending, identification of beneficiaries, approval of plans, supervision and review of social sector schemes, as well as local institutions such as schools, hospitals, etc. So in these areas, Gram Sabha impart or basically these Gram Sabhas involved in these type of decisions. And also, they will take part in the decision of local inst institutions, that is, schools, hospitals, etc. Yes, right now, yes, Jasmine and Ram Kumar, we have started today's topic with Shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary so we have studied the location of this sanctuary yes after that why this sanctuary is in news recently so on right now we are talking about this PESA act yes so the PESA act is totally so after after all these key features or model of PESA rules we can say that the PESA Act is totally rooted in culture and traditional practices of the tribal community and wastes ultimate power to the Gram Sabha to make administrative decisions. Yes, so we can say under this PESA Act, empowerment of the Gram Sabha which will help inclusive or come cultural or traditional practices of the tribal community and after that development of these villages as well. Yes. Now, after that, so it's all about the PESA. Now, come to the main point that is the local tribal communities in Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary have been Protest, they are protesting against the government right now what happened so we'll see what is SOUTA right and does it contradict PESA okay as they demanding or they feel that this new the order issued by the government is contradict with their uh, the right of PESA right or PESA rules now the state government Gujarat passed the st statue of unity area development and tourism governance authority or the SOU tourism authority yes as we know statue of unity area Yes, so statue, statue of unity, statue of unity area, development and tourism governance authority or the SOU tourism authority bill. Yes, so government passed this bill. So what is this bill? It's all about. So this bill has passed ranging from the acquiring land for any development project to taking punitive action against those violating or encroaching it. It means this act will authorize author government or state government to acquiring land for any development project to take in punitive. Those who are violating or encroaching this land so government can take action against them right so the authority will define the limits of the tourism development area and will be empowered to acquire immovable property 
under the right to fair compensation and transparency in land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act 2013 so what happens is as we know the tribals enjoying their rights in this particular area right so now with the help of pesa they conducting their all day to day affairs and governance with the help of gram sabha now state government passed the bill that is statute of unity tourism authority bill in which government has pass from ranging from acquiring land for any development project and if anybody will violate or encroach that you know this action of government then they will take necessary action against tribes or the people right so the authority will define the limits of tourism development area and will be empowered to acquire immovable property yes to acquire immovable property under the right to fair compensation and transparency in land acquisition rehabilitation act settle rehabilitation and resettlement act 2013 so this bill is all talking about the pass of the government and now this statue of unity tourism authority bill or this institution we can say this bill designate the area under the separate governance unit so this bill passed to form a special unit we can say that is a separate governance unit which will led by the ceo and assisted by two deputy collectors as well as officers from revenue health tourism fire safety and town planning so this bill passed the formation of the body we can say or governance unit which will handle all activities in this areas so this statue of unity tourism authority will largely work as a local body that will prepare and execute a development plan or a town planning scheme then remove encroachment and provide civic amenities like water supply transportation power supply drainage hospitals medical services schools public parks markets shopping places disposal of waste among others right so this bill sets aside 10 crore from the consolidated fund of the state for the discharge of functions and duties by the statue of unity tourism authority yes now just we'll see how or this statue of unity tourism uh, authority contradict with pesa or not okay now in this as per the bill the police can assist the authority in prohibiting any nuisance being caused or preventing any such activity process or the operation being carried out if it opens that it will damage or deteriorate the tourism potentially of the area yes so here is the assistance of police is also mentioned in the bill yes in this bill expenses and cost incurred if any in removing or abating such nuisance shall be recovered as an area of land revenue area of land revenue from the person who has caused such nuisance yes in this bill they mentioned that a person who will create nuisance or is there any expenses or cost incurred to removing uh, removing or abating such nuisance and that amount or expenses shall be recovered from that person yes now persons who fail to comply with the directions given by the authority shall be punishable with imprisonment for up to a month or with a fine of 50000 or both so these tribes 
are protect, uh, protesting against this bill as well. So where the bill is mentioned, action against tribal people as well, if we can say. Yes. Now, the offense will also be treated as a cognizable and non bailable So, person authorized can entry, enter or enter any land or building between sunrise and sunset by giving occupant notice at least 24 hours. Yes. So, the bill also shields the proposed authority and its members from any legal proceedings or prosecution for anything which is in good faith done or intended to be done pursuance of the provisions of this act or any rules or regulations made thereunder. Yes, so it's all about this act of Statue of Unity Tourism Authority and the bill. So what happened? The activists and the legal experts feel that this Statue of Unity Tourism Authority will overpower the provisions of PESA and they'll interfere into the tribal Gram Sabha, which means the local Gram Sabhas, they are conducting their administration in the day-to-day -day life. So, these are the few points related with this protest. Now, come to the main point. So, all these tribal communities located in this area of Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Yes, now if I'm talking about uh, today's pointer, just we'll recap what we have studied. Yes, we'll start with the Arshulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary, where we have studied a general definition of wildlife sanctuary, which means wildlife sanctuary is an area where animal habitats yes a area where animal habitats and their surrounding are protected from any sort of disturbances yes this shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary located in gujarat state right and place or located in the western satpura range of range south of the Narmada river right yes so initially it's known as Dumkal sanctuary created in the 1982 and after that renamed as Shulpaneshwar sanctuary yes then we have studied the name of this sanctuary as well the significance so basically this area predominantly occupied or we can say Vaswas tribe these are the residents in this area predominantly so they are dependent on the forest for their existence yes then we have studied fauna of this area where occurrence of flying squirrel right yes so we have studied few features of the Shulpaneshwar wildlife sanctuary so this fauna of the sanctuary like sloth bear leopard rhesus monkeys common mongoose indian seaweed cat Indian porcupine, four horned antelope, parking deer, cheetal, pangolin, flying squirrel, python, snakes, lizards, tortoise are found in this area of Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Yes. Yes, friends. And after that, we have studied the recent order issued by the 
Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, where this notification classifying 121 villages villages around this Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Yes, so this notification classifying these 121 villages around Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary as a eco-sensitive zones. Then we have studied what is meant by eco-sensitive zones. Basically, in this eco-sensitive zone means the land cannot be transferred for transferred for non-agriculture or commercial use. Yes, so conservation of the area we can say. But there is exception. If anyone wants to transfer this land or use of this land then approval of government or approval from the government is mandatory in such cases yes so the tribal community started their protest against the order issued by the government and they mentioned that our constitution under article 243 m mentioned about the PESA rules, right? So, these rules mentioned under this article, so our constitution is protecting rights of the tribal communities. Yes, so we have studied the working and their day-to-day -day activities, how they conducting under the PESA rule. So, the importance of Gram Sabha as well how they work yes to fulfilling their responsibilities in the working of the village right yes right so we can say that this PESA Act is totally rooted in the culture and traditional practices of the tribal community and west ultimate power to the Gram Sabha to make administrative decisions. Then what happened in what happened in this region? That is the state government Gujarat passed one bill that is Statue of Unity Tourism Authority Bill. So the member of these tribal communities feels that this bill contradict with the PESA Act or we can say encroachment of their rights. So that's why they are protesting against this order. Yes. So we have studied few details of this Statue of Unity Tourism Authority Bill. So, after that, so if we are talking about this PESA and this bill passed by the state government of Gujarat, so the activists and environmentalists or legal experts feel that the Statue of Unity Tourism Authority bill will overpower the provisions of PESA and now we will see the stand of the state government on this bill which means related with the Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary and nearby areas which is habitat for the tribal communities as well. Yes. So, the Gujarat government has decided to go ahead with its plan to formalize the creation of the new authority for Statue of Unity and which has been aggressively marketed as a tourism destination. Yes. And the state government announced details of Statue of Unity Tourism Authority. Yes, so they included the circle of administrators. Yes, so the first circle includes the administrators for the Statue of Unity, Shesh Bharat Bhavan, 
Gora Bridge Navigation Channel, Jetty Service and overall maintenance of the complex. And in the second circle, government include that, the administrator for the other projects around the Statue of Unity. So we can say that, so government continue with the development as or they are continuing their all provisions under this act and they aggressively marketed the tourist destination of the Statue of Unity. All right. So these are the few facts and information related with the Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. So guys, now as already I have announced or give you the information regarding Un Un Academy Summit 2.0. So please attend this summit. We have provided link in the description as well. And after that, there is one combat, an academic con combat scheduled on 20th February in the morning 11 o'clock. Yes, so enroll yourself using code RBI Life for this combat where you will get amazing prizes on the basis of the rank secured by the candidates. So you can participate in the an academic combat where you can win amazing prizes including like complimentary subscription for the our an academy plus courses along with few rank holders will get 75% 50% or 25% off respective with their ranks in the subscription for our plus courses yes guys so do not forget to attend this unacademic combat scheduled on 28th February. Yes, so it's all about the information and current issue related with the Shulpaneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe our channel and unacademy videos. So, we will help you throughout the preparation with all such type of current issues related with the environment and all subjects yes you can join our telegram group using this link and hit the bell icon for the notification for the regular lectures yes friends so till the time keep revising keep studying we'll see you in the next lecture all the best